Hello and welcome to The View from Feleban. I'm Silvia Pavoni, Economics Editor of the Banca, and I'm now talking to Liliana Rojas Suarez, welcome, uh, who is uh, the Director of the Latin America Initiative at the Center for Global Development based in Washington. So uh, you've just completed a presentation and a panel discussion that was about regulation and uh, Basel III rules, which um, and not uh, as uh, um, widely adopted in Latin America as they are in other parts of, uh, of the world, to only 26% of uh, countries, or so just about uh, a little bit over a fourth of uh, uh, the, the countries in Latin America have adopted, compared to almost half of uh, Asian countries. But does it matter? Well, uh, not really, uh, because even though they don't comply on paper, in reality, the banks in Latin America in general are quite capitalized and have plenty of liquidity. So from the point of view of stability, there's no much concern really at this time in terms of the strength of the bank. So um, if uh, they decide, the ones that have not implemented yet decide to comply, they will have to go through the process, but they will be able to do so. Uh, and so the, the push is not so much from uh, a need uh, to actually show the level of uh, uh, capital strength they have, but it seems to be more requirement from uh, international observers, namely the rating agencies. So h how come did Basel III become one of the uh, perhaps uh, unspoken requirements? Yes, that, that is a very important question because the Basel Committee itself says that the Basel III um, uh, recommendations were designed for global active banks. And so it's not a requirement for other countries and other banks to actually put it in place. Uh, the reason why rating agencies and others actually uh, look forward towards that implementation is because they have no other standards to compare. Right? I mean, Basel III have become the international standard for comparison between different banking systems. In reality, there are much simpler standards like the, what is called, the, also from Basel, but not from Basel III, which is called the core principles from Basel, which are much more simple um, uh, uh, recommendations in terms of governance, in terms of supervisor authority, in, in terms of accounting standards, that they, that actually should be the right standards as opposed to Basel III, which is a complex uh, a instrument designed for global banks. Uh, so obviously a big part of uh, Basel III is um, uh, our liquidity requirements. Uh, which uh, in this case are actually uh, perhaps more important to Latin American banks. Can you tell me why? Yes. Uh, yeah, liquidity requirements, as you know, Latin America has passed through so many crises in the past. And they all started because the liquidity in the banking system dry up completely. So be after this crisis and before Basel III, mainly before the global financial crisis, uh, the uh, supervisors and the regulators in Latin America have noticed that and have put in place a large number of norms and regulations to take into account the liquidity provisions that the country needs. So liquidity requirements as from coming from Basel III is just another measurement, but not necessarily the one that Latin American countries are following up right now. Uh, so that's, that's one of the big concerns. Um, another concern is obviously the amount of uh, sovereign debt that <coughs> banks <coughs> hold in their balance sheets, which uh, is usually something that is considered rather uh, solid as an investment. But uh, in many cases around the world, um, specifically in Latin America, this hasn't really proved to be the case. So what's going to happen? Yes, that's, that's a great question because um, from Basel III standards, uh, the government paper is considering one of the uh, assets that is of the highest possible liquidity. And now the reason why that's the case is because Basel III has been calibrated for advanced economies. And in advanced economies, like in the United States or in Europe, you have the euro, you have the US dollar, which don't lose liquidity in bad times, right? Usually there is a demand and supply that continues going on, so there is not a loss in liquidity. That is not the case in Latin America. In every crisis, government paper have lost 
total liquidity, and actually have been, as we know, there is many cases of uh, problems because of the quality of government paper. And so uh, there could be a false sense of security if you were to say, okay, uh, let's follow the recommendation of Basel III, have a lot of uh, uh, government paper in the balance sheet of the banks, and assume that that's very uh, high quality liquidity because in Latin America and other emerging markets it is not. So that could be uh, potentially a problem if Basel III were to be introduced in terms of how investors would uh, look and uh, how comfortable they would feel um, about uh, investing in a specific bank that does meet the requirements but you know, is uh, susceptible to uh, the crisis uh, happening in that country. Uh, lastly, you're an economist and I wanted to ask you uh, your views about uh, the economic prospects for the whole of the region. The past few years have been uh, not particularly good and gentle on Latin America. What uh, are we going to expect in the future? Yes, the future is much more bumpy, a bumpy road coming in front of us than what it was in the past, right? I mean, we are observing uh, an increase in the cost of uh, funding, uh, mostly motivated by the Fed actions, the United States Federal Reserve, which is clearly is very um, determined to continue increasing interest rate for good reasons for the United States. Um, also, the US dollar appreciation. And uh, the reason why these two factors are very important for Latin America is because in recent time, there has been a large amount of issuance of debt denominated in dollars. And so now the question is, uh, what is the extent of currency mismatches in the countries? What is this not only the volume of debt, but the volume denominated in dollars? Um, and so uh, the way I see Latin America looking forward is that the window of opportunity for those reforms that allow the economy to grow that window of opportunity is closing by, you know, is really not giving too much space uh, in a region that has been growing partly because of what's been happening in the international economy, as opposed as due to the internal reforms, which actually have been very scarce throughout the region. So a delicate moment for Latin America, uh, we're still talking about uh, a big reform needing to go through, for example, in Brazil, plenty of other reforms across the region. So hopefully we're going to see some movement um, in the region. And I uh, just want to thank you very much for your comments. Thank you so much.